Um, I thought I would do something a little less intense this time, and so I uh, wanted to talk about basically what to say to a widow or not to say, and granted, I'm sure this is different for each of us out there, but I have been part of a uh, widower's group since I lost Jake. And I see a lot of the same things posted. Um, most of it is just what you would think is common sensitivity. <laughs> but I guess there's just people out there that are not um, socially adapt <laughs> to recognize what's appropriate and what's not appropriate to be talking about um, to a widow. Someone that just lost their spouse. So, um, I made myself some notes so I wouldn't get distracted because obviously during my introduction I was not planning on just spilling my guts um, in my first video. But that's that's kind of one of the things that happens. Um, again, something that I learned from being a part of a widower's group. So, again, if you are a new widow, um, try and find a group. I'm part of a Facebook group and it's helped a ton um, just to be able to relate to different people, read something that maybe I wouldn't necessarily be brave enough to post but then realize that I'm feeling the same way um, and that's pretty awesome. But I'm getting sidetracked again. Anyways, but what I was saying by that is a lot of times um, or a lot of widows feel or notice that the first time they talk to someone within like the first five minutes they have to share that they're a widow. It's now become your identity and not that you want to depress everyone and <laughs> and as you're saying it you're thinking oh my gosh here goes the conversation you know, but when you, it's just like you almost need to, everyone needs to know that this precious part of you is gone. You want everyone to know about your spouse. Because um, Jake is the most important thing to me. You know, the uh, most important person to me. So... It's almost like word vomit to talk about him and to talk about what happened as soon as I meet anyone, <laughs> um, which is super fun. Um, anyways, I digress. So back to the topic of what to say or what not to say to a widow. Now the most common one is how are you? And this is a hard one because I definitely want it to be acknowledged that this is happening. I don't want it to be completely ignored, but I don't want to go into detail about it. I've had people press for it, but how are you? I'm crappy. Okay, but how are you? 10 minutes later, um, along with that, what happened? Oh, can I ask what happened? If it comes out, can I ask? You kind of already know that it's somewhat inappropriate. If, if I want to tell you what happened, I will. I'm not ready to share what happened because there's a lot more that's gone into it and I don't want to discuss it and I've had people push me on that too, especially those that kind of know um, our history but not enough that I'm close friends with them. And I have um, several people ask me, well, can I ask what happened? Or assuming what happened. If you want to do that, don't do it to the widow. If you need to gossip, if you need to figure out what happened, which granted, I'm sure I've done this in the past before this has been. <laughs> Did you catch it? Piper likes to catch flies. <laughs> But, um, yeah, don't, don't do that to the widow. Or family members. It happens to my mother-in-law all the time. She is having just as hard of a time, if not more, than me. Um, 
Don't even ask what happened. Okay? Okay, guys. <laughs> um, my aunt and the uncle were asking, they're like, well, what do you wish that people would do for you? Or how do you, how would you have liked to receive help? What people, what could have people done for you? Um, so I live in Utah. I'm LDS, aka Mormon. A big part of the culture is service. It's just what it is, um, which is fantastic. Um, it's good to get outside yourself and serve. Definitely helps um, when you're going through stuff. I had people asking, okay, well, what can I do for you? Or tell us when you need a meal, you know, or would you like a meal? And this sounds dumb or strange, but I would just say okay or thank you. I didn't have it in me to ask. Um, so what I wish is that they would have just done it. Um, especially being as young as I am, I didn't feel like it was appropriate for me to be asking for meals. You know, for example, when I can clearly cook for myself. Um, I don't have any physical impairments, but Jake and I used to cook all the time together. He was my little chopper. Um, I'll share that later. <laughs> he was my chopping champion. Anyways, um, we cooked together all the time, and plus just the dis depression and shock that I was in, I didn't want to cook. And so probably for the first month, I didn't eat um, in the house, if I went out with people and we ate out, I would basically gorge myself because I was starving, because I couldn't cook at home. Um, same thing for service, and I know that this varies so much from people, person to person, so I can't claim that this would be the same for everyone but like my my bond was a, a mess I had um, someone come and mow my lawn for me um, I didn't <laughs> I didn't realize at first I came home and I was like, what is different and I realized um, to be to realize that someone had mowed my lawn and it wasn't something that I mean, it was bothering me that it was so crazy, but um, I didn't realize how much I needed it to be done until someone did it for me, and that was amazing service, and um, I really appreciated, I really appreciated that, and I think more things like that would have gone, um, would have gone, um, would have been appreciated. Someone's um, texting me instructions um then also my house I did actually break down and ask a friend um, about that but um or some co-workers their friends um to come help me clean my house and they were awesome and we sped cleaned the whole house sped clean speed cleaned the whole house and it took off such a huge load. I was so frustrated that um, everything had to happen in just a messy house. I was mad about that. I was mad in general about losing Jake, but I was mad that it had to be in a messy place. Then I had people coming. My mom was coming, and I know that she would help me clean. My mom's like a super cleaner. But I just wanted it to be clean when she came because she was going to be staying um, in the house and I just wanted it to not be a nightmare. Um, and so yeah, they, they helped me clean and it was amazing and I just think that, you know, again I could be wrong but I think most people out there there is just so much going on during this time that you can't even think. People are like, what do you need? And oftentimes, like, I don't even know. I don't know what I need. 
but that, that is what I needed. Um, I felt like there's other people that could be using this service. Um, I should be stronger than this. I can cook. I'm not physically impaired. I'm not sick, but I was. I was depressed. I am depressed. Okay. So it's it's that's that counts for you you people out there, you people for you guys out there that are um, not wanting to ask for service. If you if you just lost someone, um, ask. But I know um, I'm in the same position. I can't ask either. So for those of you that are watching this for someone that you know that has lost someone, look for a need and fill it. If you want to find a way to help someone that has lost someone, look for it and even fill it. Their dishes are dirty, clean their dishes. Um, after the funeral, running around, all I wanted to do was sleep. And my mom made sure I got in bed. I'm going to take care of everything. Go take, go take a nap. Do they sleep at all? Nope. Um, um, yeah, I can go more into that actual day another time, but I don't want to get distracted again. But, um, yeah, that I think is um, where it's at. It's because we can't ask for ourselves. It's too hard. We don't know what we need, but um, there, there you can notice. You can notice needs. And fill them. Like I would, I would. It would have been nice if someone would have gone to take my dogs for a walk. You know, things like that. And I sound like a brat um, talking about oh me 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 me. But it's just it it. You know, I I want to be honest, and that's what um, we need. And again, uh, it's just this weird thing about ask. You know, being asked how are you doing because you want people to care, but you don't want to talk about it. Ah. We're so confusing. Anyways, maybe that's just a woman thing. Um, I don't know about male widowers. That would be the same. But um, then the other thing that I was talking about before my camera cut off and I was talking for a long time was um, just mementos that widows keep. And um, I just feel like some are weird to others um some are not one thing that has been hard is with a memento that i've kept some people's reactions so um excuse you thank you um some people's reaction to a memento i kept so i um wanted to get good at cutting jake's hair and He's a saint because he was letting me practice on him. So I just practiced on his hair, and a week, you know, prior, or like even a couple days prior, he was complaining about his hair because he was doing the pompadour look, which, if you met Jake <laughs> to begin with, he's such a cutie because there's no way he would have done that hairstyle, but he did it because... I told him it was cute, and he is a cutie for wanting to look cute for me. Um, I'll go. I should go more into that stuff later because it's funny. Anyway, so that's the style, you know, that's popular right now, and he. That's how I cut his hair, and how he was doing it for a while. But in the back, I had um, not left the hair long enough, and I had not cut it short enough, so it like couldn't lay flat, and it couldn't go up. Anyways, um, his hair wasn't cooperating, it was sticking out, and so he was saying, you need to cut it shorter for me so I can at least, like, blend it and hide it, and I was like, I got this, I'll cut it for you, but I didn't get a chance to, to cut it before. So, um, the funeral director had called me and he said, okay, you know, this is the day that we're going to get Jake, um from the medical examiner and when we can we'll be able to dress him the next day because we need to be able to prepare him here. And so I thought 
I need to cut his hair for him because he was complaining. He was complaining about it. And so I needed to make sure that it was it, was, it looked good. And so, um, so I brought my scissors and clippers and everything to cut his hair. And I was cutting his hair, and I realized that I couldn't throw it away. And I'm really glad I'm not the only one because my brother-in-law, Nick, he was like, hey, Lindsay, can I have some of Jake's hair? And I'm glad he vocalized that because I wanted some too. And so I said, of course. Sorry, I guess this is a really vocal with his toys. So I, um, I kept all, most of it and then Nick took some. And, um, a week or a couple days later, I don't know, um, because everything was a blur, but, um, Nick texted me late at night and said, I've got something for you, can I bring it over? And I said, yeah, of course. And he brought over this little vial with a curl of Jake's hair in it. Um, Jake has super... Thick, dark, curly hair to match his adorable big brown eyes, and it's one of the things. One of the things. One of the things that was so attractive um, to me about him was his cute curly hair. So he gave me this little little bottle of it. Um, I got this pretty chain, and then I. Um, also got the, the like the Kate Spade initial necklaces. I always wanted one with my initial on it. And after I got this little vial, I thought I really would love to have one with Jake's initial on it. So I got a J. Um, I on the back it says one in a million, which is super fitting, and I love it. I've got my little. Um, Memorial around my neck. I've had some reactions to it that are frustrating. Um, anyway, so that's that's been hard. Um, to me, it's not weird at all. Even if he hadn't passed away, it's just hair. But to some people, it's really gross to them, and they make faces. And then I get to sit there and describe why, and still they're making faces. And like I just told you that my husband passed away and you're making a nasty face at me like pay attention um anyway so that's that um I'm not gonna keep rambling those are just some of the things that I've thought of as far as what not to say do what to do say um to to a widow um the moral of the story is just to be sensitive think before you speak um there really are no words there really are no words um and that's okay you know a, a hug is great um i'm sorry is something that comes out but what else are you supposed to say so i get it what what do you say um this sucks i hate this um there's no words but anyways if you um hopefully this helps someone that if you're going through the same thing you can relate or if you are a friend or a family member of someone that just lost someone that you can watch this and maybe get some ideas on how to help and be a little bit more sensitive to it and uh, maybe get in our shoes to know but uh thanks for watching and i'll see you in my next video thanks bye <laughs> Nana, shut your pie